And a major part of these issues in hypermasculinity and the, and the behavior is the size and fragility of the male ego. The hypermasculine ego is like a frozen ocean. It's vast, it's ever expanding, and it's trapping a lot of shit below the surface. And one crack and the whole thing crumbles and we're left wet and struggling in the water because no one taught these men how to swim. Learning shit is also feminine. You, you can't kill anybody with a book. Before we parted, he said to me, you're either guarded by your soul or driven by your ego. It is only a matter of choice. And for me, these words were absolutely life-changing because they initiated a change or a move away from what I perceived to be manly or not. It altered the map that I'd been referring to most of my life. The ego is what drives the competition with these stereotypical gender roles. And the only thing this ego is trying to prove that it's worth something to other men doing the same thing. Scrutiny from other men is a major flaw of hypermasculinity. It creates this feedback loop and inhibits these men from forming real relationships. The scrutiny is what makes these men look at women as conquests instead of people. They don't want a partner that they can become a better person with. They want a trophy wife, gilded on a mantle to, to show off for these other men in their group, a crown to look pretty and nothing more. This competitive behavior is what leads to misogyny and homophobia and racism from these hypermasculine men. I mean, dudes are already in competition with other dudes, right? Who's got the hotter wife or who's got the biggest car there by the smallest penis or, or who can bench the most amount of weight or has the most amount of money. And the winners of these contests get the alpha male of the group award and they get to shoot off their guns during sex. That is the law of the hypermasculine tribe, okay? These are old rituals and old rules meant to appease a very old god who, to them, is a super ripped dude banging broads whether they want it or not. So when we add women and minorities and LGBTQ community folks into the mix, that's just more competition for men who are already competing with each other. Hypermasculinity is just so exhausted from competing with itself. The vastness of their egos will always be bigger than their own dicks. And losing these competitions means that these men are not providers or, or protectors or procreators. It means that they don't have power and that's the crux of being a man. Power. And now, the manliest thing, you know, anybody could ever do, like the manliest of all men, you know, the, the one that the prophecies of Brodom have been speaking of for generation is one man that can generate enough power from one flex of his muscle to, like, power the entire city. But power is important for hypermasculinity to wield over groups like women and minorities and the LGBTQ communities because, because of slavery, black men were seen as helpless, right? Irish and the Italians were seen as too emotional uh, and passionate. Jews were looked at as too bookish. Asians were too soft and brittle. And women, uh, well, the, they were, of course, property, uh, which is proven by the uh, beautiful poetry of uh, Bitches Be Shopping. But in order to deviate from sympathy, because men do not do that, they had to show their dominance with hypocritical arguments, right? Black men were helplessly vandalizing women, and women were carnal and need to be sheltered from that animalistic behavior. The gays were, were too sexually insatiable, and there is only room for loving and fucking God. Now, Asians were torturers and, and have a valid driver's license as their tool for it. Southern Europeans were, were pervs and, and sexual predators. Only the white Anglo-Saxon male was pure in stoicism, middle-class work ethic, and blue jeans that will eventually be sung about in a Bruce Springsteen song. Stoicism is how this power is wielded. 
even though these men are supposed to be aggressive risk takers, they have to push all of that anger down. Hypermasculinity is so bad that it's oppressing anger. Now, all of this is driven by fear, right? The fear uh, that the ocean of ego will crumble and all that's left is a hurricane of repressed emotion, the need for hugs, and the entire Adele collection. Besides and all, and if that's the case, then nobody will want to procreate with them, right? They can't protect or provide for anyone. And not only is that embarrassing, it also leaves them without a sense of purpose for what they're supposed to be. That's a huge revelation about hypermasculinity. Embarrassment is its biggest weakness, right? Most women fear like rape and murder and, and the inability to lose five pounds. But men are afraid that the secrets of liking unmasculine things will surface. And I mean, that's really what kryptonite does to Superman. It reveals his love for knitting and he has no option but to start killing himself from the inside out.